tonight. Woo, hallelujah. Sunday, I was pretty uh, jacked up on the Holy Ghost. And I shared something under that anointing um, that I feel like I... Because it was... Uh, <clears throat> I was um, explaining to you... Uh, what in the world is that? All right. All right. That ain't even a half. That's a... <laughs> That's a quarter. Hallelujah. All right. We'll, we'll use it. Anyway, Sunday night, um, uh, under that strong anointing, I feel like I, I, I ministered something that I need tonight to kind of revisit because I want to make sure you get it um, because, uh, you know, it was under such a strong anointing. I feel like I want to kind of tonight um, uh, slow down just a little bit and make sure you get what we uh, shared when we were talking about the river. Because what I did was um, I I uh, gave a sort I, I gave a a different interpretation of a scripture out of Isaiah fifty nine uh, than what the King James gives, and I tried to put it in context for you. But I I, I feel like that was that's something that I really need to kind of slow down and make sure we go over and make sure you understand where I'm coming from, um, because I you know uh, when you're when you're breaking down scripture and you're trying to put things in context, I don't want to um, just move on from that. Uh, I want to revisit it and make sure we get it. Can we do that tonight? And then, then we'll talk about some other things. Uh, so I'm, I, uh, I'm preaching from three different notes. I got, that's why I brought my computer. I got three different notes um, that I'm drawing from here tonight to try to convey this thing that, that I want to convey. Hallelujah. So uh, I don't really have a title for this, uh, but let's pray f and we'll get into this. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're asking God that your anointing, your oil comes on this vessel of clay. God, think through our minds, speak through our lips, God, and say what needs to be said tonight night, God, and let us come forth, God, with your word and clarity, God, and understanding, and we bind every demon and devil in hell that would come to hinder this word, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, so so let's, let's um, review just a little bit. Let's go back and let's look at John chapter 4. Put John chapter 4, 13 up there, um, Taj. Let me get my Bible turned to this, um, what I want to look at here. Hold on just a second. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. John chapter 4, verse 13. Uh, okay. You know what? I gotta quit looking at these little tabs. I'd do better if I just turned to it. I don't know why I try to look, find the book on these tabs. Hallelujah. All right. Um. Okay. All right. Uh, remember, this is the woman at the well, and I'm gonna try not to reteach or re. He preach what we said Wednesday. I just want to go over these scriptures again real quick. Um, John chapter 4 verse 13. This is where Jesus meets the woman at the well. And uh, he says to her, um, let's look at verse 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Now of course he's talking about the uh, natural well. Amen. And uh, how many knows that that natural well is a it's a reference to the natural wells that we drink from in life that leave us thirsty? The well of relationship, the well of religion, the well of of substances and so on and so forth. Hallelujah. Uh, but he says, whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him. So Jesus has got water for us uh, that we can't get from a natural well. And it only comes through him. He says, the water that I shall give him. You can't get this water any other way than with Jesus. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. This water that I shall give him, he shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now, what we mentioned Wednesday was this is a reference to salvation. 
So we said the, when he's talking about the drink, he's talking about receiving. All right. And when he's talking about water here, it's a type of the Holy Spirit. So when we drink of this water, it's a type of receiving the Holy Spirit into our life. John chapter four is describing receiving the Holy Spirit at salvation. And when the Holy Spirit comes in, he'll, he'll do a work and it's described here as a well of water springing up inside of you into everlasting life. Or in other words, the Holy Spirit will come in at salvation and produce everlasting life in you. So in the everlasting life in the Greek, it's Zoe, which is the God kind of life. Amen. And so it's producing righteousness in you. It's producing the love of God in you as, um, Tyson was talking about earlier. It produces peace in you. It produces joy in you. Uh, it produces all of these things in you. It's, 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 it's the work of the Holy Spirit at salvation. Now we go over to John chapter seven. And he describes a different work of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 7, and we're looking at verses 37 through 39. Uh, Y'all leave me alone tonight because I'm going to try to calm down and teach this thing. And then, you know, I, we might get revved up in a minute, but just... Y'all, y'all help y'all leave me alone. Be good to me tonight. Amen. <laughs> you try. Y'all try. Yeah, try. You try and I'll try. We'll probably both fail. But we'll try. <laughs> All right, John chapter seven, verse thirty seven. Uh, Jesus says, In the last day, that great day of, of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. So there's there's another drink that he's describing uh, three chapters later. And uh, uh, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Uh, but this spake he of the spirit, uh, the capital S, so that's the Holy Ghost, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So he tells us in verse 39 what he's describing here. He's describing uh, the Holy Ghost that was going to come on uh, the disciples in the upper room. That, and so, so he's making a reference to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So John chapter 7 is referring to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In John chapter 7, he's talking about another drink. Everybody say another drink. <laughs> There's another drink. There's another work of the Holy Spirit that comes after salvation. So there's a drink of the Holy Spirit, a receiving of the Holy Spirit at salvation, and he comes in and he produces a wellspring in you, producing uh, Zoe life in you. That's salvation. All right. That's for you. And you can you can stay there and that's fine. And and you'll be the righteousness of God and you'll have some peace and joy and you'll uh, you'll go on to heaven when it's time. Uh, but then there's another drink that you can drink of the Holy Spirit There's another receiving of the Holy Spirit. And he'll come in and do a separate work on the inside of you. Now, this doesn't happen all at salvation. It's another, you have to go back and you have to receive again of the Holy Spirit. So the same Holy Spirit that come in at salvation, you got to receive of him again and take another drink of him. And he said on that other drink, he'll do a work in you and it'll be like a river coming out of your belly. Hallelujah. Now, belly there in the Greek is translated innermost being or your spirit, man. Hallelujah. Uh, so there's there's an initial receiving of the Holy Ghost into you. But then once he comes in, we need to receive of him again. And it's called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And we 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 receive this baptism. It's free. So we don't have to beg for it. We don't have to earn it. We just say, Lord, I, I, I want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. And when you do that by faith, it'll be it, the, the Holy Spirit will begin to produce this river out of you. Now, when that river begins to come out of you, and I want you to notice what, what Jesus calls it. He calls it a river. When that river begins to come out of you, that's when the Holy Ghost begins to flow out of you in tongues. So that same water that's in you producing eternal life begins to flow out of you initially in the tongues. 
That's the biblical sign and evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Okay. Now, why do I say that? Because the places that were given in the Bible where men are baptized in the Holy Ghost, three different places, they spoke with other tongues. Acts chapter 2, they spoke with other tongues. Uh, Acts chapter 10, when uh, Peter went to Cornelius' house and they were baptized in the Holy Ghost, they spoke with other tongues. Acts chapter 19, when uh, Paul went into Ephesus and they were baptized with the Holy Ghost, they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Amen. So, we have to go by the Bible. Amen. There's people, well, I don't believe that you have to speak in tongues to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, I got to go by the Bible. And when I look at biblical evidence, when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, there's a physical sign of the tongues. Now, I'm trying not to get on the, uh, that's not what I want to get on. Hallelujah. But anyway, and so it's like this. Let, let me just, I feel the leading to go here. I'm just going to follow the Holy Spirit tonight. <clears throat> so, uh, you, when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost and you're receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you're not receiving another spirit. And it's not like the spirit come in and then left you and you're receiving him again. That, no, he came in at salvation. It's kind of like this. Uh, when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, that's when the gifts begin to flow, the gift of tongues. The, then, then on into miracles and signs and wonders and healings and words of wisdom and prophecy and preaching and, and all of these things. That's that river flowing out of you flows out of you and it and it and it happens when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost but but see the Holy Ghost moves in and he's got all these gifts for you yeah. it's kind of like this it's like a and, and I heard it put this way and it, and it made a lot of sense to me it's like a a man that uh, walks up into this business and he go and he's going to go up to the CEO's office and he goes to the secretary and he says to the secretary he said I need to see <clears throat> Uh, you know, see, I need to see the CEO. I got something for him and he's carrying a briefcase and in this briefcase, he's got a gift for the CEO of, uh, of I don't know, a um, hundred thousand dollars. He wants to give this CEO for whatever reason. He's, 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 he's just got a gift for him. Maybe we'll just say it's a nonprofit and he's got a, he's got a donation for the nonprofit and he wants to see the CEO of the nonprofit, right? And he's got this, he's got this gift in this briefcase and the secretary calls up the CEO and says, you got so-and-so here, he's got a gift for you. And he's like, well, send him in. So he comes into the office and he sets down, but the guy's on the phone and he never acknowledges him. Now he's in the, he's in the office and he's got the gift, but the guy hasn't received the gift yet because he hasn't acknowledged that he's there and he hasn't said, hey, I'll take what you have. Are you hearing me? Amen. So that's what it's like to be saved, but not be baptized in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is living on the inside of you and he has all of these gifts. But if you don't receive, if you don't take another drink, come on. Amen. If you don't specifically receive what he has for you, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then he, you, you can't walk, you can't operate in these gifts. But once you receive him, Amen. Hallelujah. Then these gifts can start flowing out of you. Now, Jesus called it a river. So the so so what's in this river? Well, at the book of Acts, when when uh, when the when the when the apostles got filled with the Holy Ghost and they come out of the other upper room, what did they do? They spoke in tongues. They preached. They did miracles. They prophesied. Amen. They cast out devils. Uh, they operated in words of knowledge and words of wisdom, get, working of miracles. So that's that river coming that, that came out of them, right? All right. Now, let's go to Isaiah 59. So does everybody understand what the river is? All right. All right. Okay, let's go to Isaiah 59 now. Let me get on down in here. Okay, now, in Isaiah 59, um, let me pull up, let, let's look at the King James version of this original verse in the King James Bible. And as I said, as I said Sunday night, if you quote it like this and preach it like this, I just heard, I was listening to a service the other day, or just yesterday or today, and I heard this scripture quoted, and I amend it. Because I, I'm, I'm good if you quote it like it is. Um, Isaiah 59 and 19, put that up there. I'm sorry, Taj. You have to work with me tonight, Taj. Hallelujah. 
I didn't give Tosh a set thing of notes. We're just, he's just going to flow with me. Um, so this is the original verse. This is the one everybody's familiar with. This is the one I kind of, I, I wanted to use a different version, a different interpretation, because I felt like it fit more the context of the chapter and what we're talking about tonight. I'm not twisting scripture. I want you to know when I taught this Sunday night, I did nothing to the truth. I, I didn't change the doctrine. I didn't change the truth. I just, there's a, there's a version of this scripture that I feel like is a better translation and, and what God is saying. So this is the original uh, verse that we read Sunday night. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the West and his glory from the rising of the sun. Uh, and now in the original uh, King James version it, in this uh, verse it says when the enemy shall come in like a flood so the picture is the enemy's coming in like a flood okay or or we could say uh, like a, 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 a river that's what a flood is that's a raging river right so when the enemy comes in like a flood, it says the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. I've got no problem with that. When the enemy comes in, I believe God will stop him. OK, we, we're, we're good with that. Hallelujah. But when you look at the context of the chapter, um, let's see. Let, let actually. I know Taj wasn't ready, but if you have your Bibles open or if you just want to listen to me, let's read just a few of the verses of the chapter. Um, this is why I wanted to do this tonight. I wanted to take a little bit more time with this. Is that all right? Amen. So uh, in, when you look in Isaiah 59, you go back up. Let's just go back up to verse one. We won't read all the verses, uh, maybe, but we'll just read down here a few just to kind of get an idea. Okay. So verse 19 has got the enemy coming in like a flood, like he's going to come in like a flood. But notice how the chapter's written here. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, right? Now, this is Old Testament. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. And then it goes on to down and, and, and it says, for your hands have defiled with blood, your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, your tongues have muttered uh, perverseness, right? No, nobody's calling for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity. They speak lies. They conceive mischief. They bring forth iniquity. Okay. What's going on here? Notice now he goes on down here and all of these next few verses till you get down to verse 17 or verse uh, verse 16. He's God is going off about how bad, how sinful and how perverse mankind is. So what we're seeing is in this chapter, this chapter, when God starts, it's not about the enemy. He's going to come in like a flood. What this chapter is describing is the enemy has already come in like a flood. When did he do it? He, and we said Sunday night, well, it began with Adam in the garden. He came in like a flood and he began to flood men's hearts with the sin nature. And he flooded it up until the days of Noah. There was no man, no, nobody was righteous on the earth but Noah. And God built an ark, saved Noah and his family, started all over and, and, and judged the rest of the world. And then it began again. And the enemy just that that sin nature, the enemy just kept he's coming in like a flood and he's flooding men's hearts with sin. Hallelujah. So that's that's what we're getting in this first part of this chapter. So he's talking about how wicked and how sinful men's hearts are because the enemy has flooded their hearts with sin. But then he gets on down here. Hallelujah. He gets on down here in the verse um, uh, 16. And. Here's what God's looking for. God's looking for an intercessor. He's looking for somebody to, 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 to fix the sin problem. And he says in verse 16, 16, he says, And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. 
Therefore, his arm brought salvation. God said, I can't find a man that can fix this, so I got to come down and fix it myself. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, amen. He says, uh, therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness, it sustained him, for he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. Who's he talking about there? God, when he came in the person of Jesus through the virgin birth... He came to fix this sin problem where Satan had come in and flooded men's hearts with sin. He said he came, he put on righteousness as a breastplate and, a, and the helmet of salvation upon his head. Those of you that weren't here Sunday night, we said that sounds like the armor that Paul described in Ephesians 6 when he said put on the full armor of God because you're not wrestling against flesh and blood, you're wrestling against spiritual wickedness. Hallelujah. So we've got a picture of God putting on armor in the person of Jesus, come on, and coming down into the earth to fight a spiritual battle. See, the disciples thought he came to raise up a physical army and overthrow Rome. That's not what he came to do. Hallelujah. He came to overthrow sin. He came to overthrow Satan. Hallelujah. He came to overthrow that sin nature and put man, reconcile men back to God and put them back in right standing with God. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is talking about Jesus putting on this spiritual armor in the person of Jesus. Hallelujah. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal for, as a cloak. What was he getting vengeance on? He was getting vengeance on the enemy for what he did to God's plan and, and man. Hallelujah. And then verse 18, he says, according to their deeds, accordingly he will repay. Fury to his adversaries, amen. Recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will repay and recompense. So what he's describing there is Jesus is going to come down, hallelujah, and he's going to fight the spiritual battle on the cross. Oh, hallelujah. And then he's going he's, he's gonna to go down into the, to the depths of hell and strip Satan of the keys of, uh, that Adam turned over to him in the beginning of death, hell, and the grave. And he's going to get up, hallelujah, with all power and authority in his hands. Woo. <laughs> hallelujah. That's what this is describing. So now we get to verse 19. And so it... In the original, it's, it's saying like the enemy has come in like a flood. But I believe the first part of the chapter is already described the flood of the enemy. Now when we get down to verse 19, uh, put the English revised version. I found a, a, a better version of this. And I'm not, I didn't come up with this. This is something that uh, men, scholars, theologians smarter than me agree with. Okay, when I was studying this out. But look at this version of, of this translation. They, uh, these scholars agree that they most likely translated that wrong in the King James Version. But notice what it says in verse 19. People from the west to the east will fear the Lord and respect his glory. He, Jesus, not the devil, he will come quickly, come on, like a fast-flowing river driven by a wind from the Lord. Are you hearing me? Yes. Hallelujah. So what are you talking about, Pastor? I'm saying to you, this is what we talked about Sunday night, that Satan has already come in like a flood, flooded men's hearts with sin. God said, I can't find no man to fix it. There's not a man that can fix this. So I'm going to put on armor, and I'm going to come down, and I'm going to fix the sin problem. And it says that he's going to come quickly. He's going to come like a fast-flowing river driven by the wind from the Lord. So God says, here's how I'm going to fix the sin problem that's flooded men's hearts. I'm going to come and I'm going to, I'm going to come and fix it like a river. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Come on. Let me say it this way. I'm going to, I'm going to fix it with a river. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to fix the sin problem of men with a river. 
Oh, y'all are getting it now, right? Come on, hallelujah. Put that, can you put verse 20 up there of, of the King James Version? And it says, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. In other words, he says, I'm going to come quickly like a river and I'm going to redeem. Hallelujah. I'm going to redeem mankind with this river. Hallelujah. With the what river? Out of your belly shall flow whew, rivers of living water. This I wanted to slow down and say this to you because I want you to see God's way of redeeming man from sin and redeeming man from the bondage of sin, his way of doing it is with a river. So what did he do? He got up on the third day and he told his disciples, he says, he says, don't go preach. Don't go do nothing yet. Go tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Come on, amen. He said, I'm coming like a fast flowing river driven by wind. Well, what happened in Acts chapter two? And here I go preaching again. What happened in Acts chapter two? It says, there they were on the day of Pentecost, gathered together in one mind and one accord. And there was a sound out of heaven like a rushing mighty wind. Oh, hallelujah. And it filled that place and cloven tongues of fire set up on each of them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The fast flowing river of Isaiah 59 is that river that came out of the upper room on the day of Pentecost. It is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm here to say to you that God's redemption plan involves the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's that river. Oh, hallelujah. Whew. Satan came in like a fast flowing river. God says, my river's faster. It's stronger. <laughs> it's greater. Come on. So what happened? This river got to flowing out of the upper room. And Peter got to preaching. Come on, cussing, backsplitting, uh, rage-filled, murder, <coughs> uh, attempted murderer. Amen. Uh, Peter got up and preached the first Pentecostal message. <laughs> Hallelujah. He had just denied Jesus three times. Come on. But now he's preaching. What happened? He got converted. <coughs> He got filled with the Holy Ghost. That river started flowing out of him. And he preached and, and, and thousands got saved. Are you hearing me? Then him and John walk into the temple uh, to our prayer and they see a lame man that's been lame from his mother's womb and they said, silver and gold, we don't have to give you. I know that's what you're expecting, but we don't have none of that. But such as I have, give ID in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. And he began to leap and run through the temple and thousands more gathered around because they were, they were amazed at the miracle and they got saved. This river started flowing. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. When the river starts flowing, hallelujah, and the, and, and the gifts start flowing and the Holy Ghost starts flowing, that's how men and women's hearts get turned around. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and I, I, it, it can't without it. It can't without it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We've got the river in this house. Now, let's go. I got to move on. Hallelujah. Let's go to, okay, let me switch notes here. Uh, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 47. Ezekiel chapter 47. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
No, no, go to, no, well, yeah, hold on. Hold your place in Ezekiel chapter 47. And, no, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 47. Let's go to there. Hallelujah. Sorry. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ezekiel chapter 47. We need this river. We need this river. No, hold your place in Ezekiel 47. Go to, go to Acts. Go to Acts chapter 19. We need this river. We need this river. I'm sorry, Tosh. Um, Acts chapter 19. Hallelujah. All I want you to see in Acts chapter 19, and then we'll, we'll skip, move right on over to Ezekiel. But, but Paul goes into Ephesus. Paul goes into Ephesus, in a, uh, and there's such a move of God that takes place in Ephesus. He spends about two years in Ephesus, if you study his missionary journeys. There's such a move of God that uh, Ephesus was the central uh, location for the worship of Diana. They built great temples to the goddess of Diana, and they worshipped her. Not to mention the the the, uh, the religious worship of the Jews that was going on in that place. And so it was bound by witchcraft. It was bound by religion. But Paul went in there and there was such a move of God in Acts chapter 19 that men and women were bringing their books of, of witchcraft and curious arts that they studied and worshiped Diana with and all these other gods with. And they were burning them in the streets. I mean, revival was breaking out. It got so bad that the idol making business where they were making Diana idols, the business makers, the, the, the idol makers started losing money because people were getting saved. They wasn't worshiping Diana anymore and they were losing money and they got mad and stirred up the government against Paul. Hallelujah. And, and tried to kill him and tried to and, and, and he had he had to eventually get out of the town. But let me show you how this move of God started, because when Paul got there, look what it says in, in, in Acts chapter 19. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. So he found some believers. Look, and he says to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Since you believed, right? Right. So he's talking about the second work, the river. Come on, amen. And they said unto him, we've not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. They hadn't heard that the Holy Ghost had come. And he said unto them, unto what then were you baptized? Whose preaching have you been listening to? And they said, Un unto John's baptism. In other words, they were t saying, we've only heard John the Baptist's message. What was John the Baptist's message? That there's one coming after me. Yes. How, I baptize you with water, but he'll baptize you with Holy Ghost and fire. Yes. Yeah. How, so they heard he was coming. They heard the Holy Ghost and fire was coming. They didn't know it was here. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You better go to a church where they're, pre they're preaching the right word for the right season. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. That's for free. I'll give you that for free. You got to find a church where the man of God or whoever is preaching the right word in the right season. John the Baptist had a right word, but it was not for their season. Come on. So Paul had the right word for the right season and he caught him up. <laughs> Look what he said. Look what it says. And it says, uh, verse 4, Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they did what? Uh, come on, they began to speak with tongues and they began to prophesy. And all the men were 12. There were 12 of them that got filled with the Holy Ghost and the river started flowing out of them. What are you saying? I'm saying to you that the whole move of God in Acts chapter 19 in Ephesus started with 12 men getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. 
In other words, when Paul went in there and he found believers, he didn't say, do y'all have a church building? Do y'all have a children's program? Do y'all do y'all, do y'all y'all have um, a women's committee? Do, come on, amen. No, he said, have y'all received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Because Paul was worried about the river. He knew the only way that this city's going to get turned around is if we get this river flowing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. That's why it annoys me that people who are filled with the Holy Ghost, who are Pentecostal, hallelujah, they never practice the gifts and they never preach about the baptism and they never pray for people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't understand that, hallelujah. Why are you going to have this, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Why are you going to have this river that that, that God has, has determined should deliver men and women's lives and not release Release it, not try to release it in the city. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't expect the Baptist churches to preach on the Holy Ghost, but at least the spirit-filled churches ought to start preaching on the power of the Holy Ghost and the baptism and the speaking in tongues and quit denying and acting like it. it's some taboo thing that we don't need to mess with. We might offend somebody. Well, go ahead and offend somebody. If you could offend them, they didn't want it anyway. Hallelujah. We need this river. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, God said, and that's what I'm trying to get across to you in Isaiah 59. I'm going to come like a fast flowing river. Not not a trickle. Come on. Hallelujah. Not a stream. Not a pond. Not a lake. But a fast flowing river. The enemies flooded the earth. I'm about to flood the earth, but I'm about to flood it with the Holy Ghost. I'm about to flood it with power. I'm about to flood it with supernatural. Hey, oh, leave, y'all, leave me. All right. So now, hallelujah. If we're, if we're going to turn the city around, we, we've got to get this. Ri- it's in the river. Now, go, go to, okay, go to Ezekiel 47. Hallelujah. I got to get to this and then, whew, thank you, Jesus. Is this helping anybody? Thank you, Jesus. I, wish, I wanted to be more prepared tonight. Hallelujah. I wasn't able to prepare like I wanted to, but anyway, the Holy Ghost, I believe, is uh, taking over. Hallelujah. Amen. Ezekiel 47. All right. Ezekiel had this vision. And he says in verse 41, afterwards, uh, he brought me again in, unto the door of the, of the house. And behold, look what it says, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. All right. Uh, so, uh, for the forefront of the house stood toward the east and the waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. So we're talking about a temple talking about the temple. He's seeing a temple. Hallelujah. The house of the Lord. And he's seeing waters coming out from the altars. Hallelujah. So we're not talking about natural waters here. Natural waters don't come out of houses and out from under all. That's not where they come from. We're talking about supernatural waters. Come on. Hallelujah. He says, um, waters came out from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the utter gate uh, by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters. And the waters were to my ankles. And again, he measured a thousand and brought me uh, through the waters. And the waters were to my knees. So are you seeing this? Yeah. So, so he's talking about there's a, there's, a, there's a river flowing out of this temple. And it's increasing. Hallelujah. Amen. It's, it's starting out small, but it's getting bigger and bigger. And the man, this angel that's in his vision is measuring out a certain distance and telling him, come into the waters. You got this? 
And he's going in, and he's, uh, it, it was up to my ankles. And then he said, come out a little further, and it got deeper. This river got deeper. Hallelujah. Whew, hallelujah. And he said it was up to his knees. Where was we at? Hallelujah. Where, where are you at? Did I read all that one? Hallelujah. So we're starting. We're at four, right? And again, he, he measured a, a thousand and brought me through the waters and the waters were to my knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through and the waters were to my loins up to my waist. Afterward, he measured a thousand and it was a river that I could not pass over for the waters were risen. Waters to swim in. Yeah. <laughs> a river that could not be passed over. Over. It engulfed me. Come on. Yeah. Now let me skip. Let, let me uh, uh, skip down to verse nine. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the rivers shall come, shall live. Amen. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish because these waters shall come thither for they shall be healed. Look at this. And everything shall live whither the river cometh. In other words, wherever this river runs, hallelujah, whatever it runs through, whatever it runs over shall live. Come on, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Wherever the river flows, hallelujah, life shall be given. So what, what kind of water are we talking about? We're talking about living water. Life-giving water. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. What was Ezekiel seeing? He, he, he saw a temple with a river flowing out of it. And it was life-giving water. Come on, hallelujah. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Put that up there, Taj. What? <laughs> know ye not that your body is the what? The temple of what? The Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living. Oh, come on, hallelujah. What was the Ezekiel seeing, he was seeing this river that is going to flow out of the belly of the believer that will get baptized in the Holy Ghost. He's seeing that river that will bring healing. He's seeing that river that will do miracles. He's seeing that river, come on, that'll break every chain and destroy every yoke as it, come on, hallelujah. Now, 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 watch this, watch this. So here's what we got to understand about this river. <clears throat> He, 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 he tells Ezekiel, he says, he says, um, Ezekiel, you be Ezekiel. Be my Ezekiel. Hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus. Yeah. I use you. I'm giving you one more shot. Hallelujah. He, he says, he says, and just get up here for now. Hallelujah. He says to Ezekiel, he says, Ezekiel, watch this. Don't just look at the river. Get in. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Whew, hallelujah. What, 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 are, what, are, what was he saying to Ezekiel? Ezekiel, this river is not something that you can just spectate. You're not supposed to just watch this river. Come on, somebody. You're not just supposed to watch this river and be a spectator of this river. you got to get in the river. This, this is not just, I don't know how to explain this to you other than this is not just a river that comes out of you. It's a river you got to get into. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout, get into it. This is a river that you've got to get into. Hallelujah. You, you got to get into the river. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You got to get into it. You got to get into it. How do I get into it? I, I, I get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me? And I start getting into it. Then I start practicing my prayer language. And I start, and I get into it. Hallelujah. Then I come to church, and I don't just watch people praise God. 
Come on, somebody. I know I'm going to hit some folks hard tonight. That's all right. Well, y'all, y'all are pretty, y'all are pretty strong. Y'all are pretty much the foundation. Hallelujah. So this may be for some people that just show up on Sunday morning or whatever, but uh, uh, you, you don't just come to church and watch people praise God. You get in. How do I get in? Well, if everybody's praising, you start praising too. Right? I get in. Hallelujah. I don't just watch people laugh in the Holy Ghost. I get in. How do I get in? Start laughing. Well, I don't feel like laughing. Well, you, 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 you don't go to the river. If anybody's ever swam in the river, you don't go to the river and stand on the banks and wait, and then all of a sudden the river grabs you and yanks you in, and all of a sudden you don't know how you got there, but you're in the river. No, you step into... Come on, this river is not going to grab you and drag you in. You're going to have to get it. Come on. Come on, man of God. Come on out. Hallelujah. That's what he was saying to Ezekiel. He's saying, Ezekiel, come on out. And Ezekiel started walking. Hallelujah. And he started getting into it. Hallelujah. He started getting into it. Thank you, Jesus. You got to get in. I said, you got to get in. I remember when, when, when I was a little kid uh, and, and revival was hitting our youth. And I remember sitting back watching all these youth get up there, getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. And they're shaking and they're jerking and they're falling in the floor and they're crying. And I wanted it, but, oh, I didn't know. I didn't. I was scared. Even though I was grew up in it and was raised in it, I was scared. What am I going to act like? What am I going to do? What, what's going to happen to me? And what's it going to feel like? Are you hearing me? But then I remember when I got in. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I got in, I shook and, and I cried and I walked around and I did all kinds of stuff. But I just remember that beyond all that, there was this overwhelming peace and glory that I couldn't explain. But it covered me and I didn't want, I didn't want it to go anywhere. Are you hearing me? I remember, I remember when I first, when, when I knew the Lord had called me, but I didn't want to say anything and I didn't want to do anything. I wanted to stay on the outside of the river, but I knew the Lord was calling me. That man was that, come on, <laughs> hallelujah. And the Lord had done measured out a distance, hallelujah. He, he didn't, notice that the man didn't measure out the full, he measured out d different distances and he brought him out a little bit out of the ankles and then the, God doesn't just throw you in the deep end. Come on, hallelujah. He didn't just, I'm not in. I'm, I'm, I wasn't in then like I am now. But I got, I got in there ankle deep. And I remember, I remember one night I couldn't contain it anymore. And God was saying, come on and get in. And I remember testimony service. Hallelujah. We had, used to have testimony service like we do sometimes here. We, we let people get up and testify. And I was, waiting for, I was waiting for that dead space where I could jump up and say what I needed to say. And I remember this person was testifying. And I was like, man, as soon as they shut up, I'm going to say something. And they finally shut up. And I just opened my, I don't even know what I said. I don't even remember what I said. I just know what hit me. Hallelujah. And the anointing, my first experience with the anointing came over me. Hallelujah. And I remember I, that was my getting in. And then I just kept on getting in. You've got, you've got to get into this river. Whew, hallelujah. This river will take you places. Ooh. It'll take your life places. It'll take, it'll take your your it'll take your spirit places that you never knew you could go. It'll cause you to do things you never knew you could do. It'll cause you to accomplish things you never knew you could accomplish. It'll cause you to touch people you never knew you could touch. But you got to get. Now watch this, watch this. Here's what, I, he, he, he brings him out and he says, come on out. And he came out and he was ankle deep. Now, there's, he brought him to different levels. I'm not trying to say to you that each level represents a certain place, but here's what I want you to see. As he brought him out into this river, you have to see, what I want you to see with each level, with each level it got harder to resist the river. 
here's where I want to take this message as I try to bring it down to an end. It's this. You've got to get into this river. Okay. And so he brings him out and he's ankle deep. Now notice if, 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 if Clayton is ankle deep in the river, he's in the river, he feels the river, he hears the water running, but he's got most of his, he's got most uh, of his control over himself. Are you hearing me? He's still in control of most of his body and his arms. Hallelujah. He's in there. He feels it. It's running over his ankles, but but he can he can still do whatever he wants to do. He can still he can he can still, you know, raise his hands and he can still move his head and he can still look around and, and that river's not affecting him much. Some people are ankle deep. They're around it, but they still think what they want to think. They still talk how they want to talk. Come on, amen. They still do what they want to do. Oh, hallelujah. And so what the man of God says is, that's not deep enough. I need you to come out deeper. Come on. And he came out and he got knee deep. Now, it's getting a little bit harder to resist the river, but he can still resist it. Come on, hallelujah. Some people are knee deep. They're, they're a little deeper into it. They're not as skeptical as they were back here in the ankle deep water. Hallelujah. They're a little bit more intrigued with the tongues. They're a little bit, they're a little bit more curious. Hallelujah. Are, are you following what I'm saying? And, 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 and they want a little bit more. It's getting a little bit harder to resist those services now. It's getting a little bit harder not to lift my hands. They, you know, it's getting a little bit harder not to just sit in the seat. Now they're starting to get up a little bit and it's getting a, come on amen it's getting a little bit harder to risk and so the man so the man of God says that's not deep enough come on you're still in control <laughs> you got to come out a little deeper and so he brings him out and he's waist deep oh now Ooh. now that's getting a little bit harder to control because now it's hard to keep your footing you really got to dig those feet in if you don't want to get come on Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're in a little deeper now. You've been knocked in the floor a couple times. <laughs> huh? Hallelujah. You felt a little goose bump. Hallelujah. Right? You shook a little bit. You said, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Hallelujah. But you ain't left yet because you're intrigued. You want, you're, 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 you're waist deep. And it's getting a little bit hard not to praise God now on Sunday morning. It's, now you're starting to lift your hands a little bit. And when everybody's clapping, you're looking at, and you're clapping your hands. And, and, so, and, and an amen come out. He's like, oh. <laughs> are you hearing me? But the man of God said, that's not you still got control. <laughs> and the Bible says, he said, come out a little deeper. And he got out into the level of water that was over his. <sighs> now, now he's caught up in the current. <laughs> Come on. He can't resist it no more. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Th are, you, are you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. He's, he, can't resist the, he can't resist the river anymore. He's caught up into the flow of the current. He can't think on his own anymore. And, and he can't move on his own anymore. And he can't talk like he wants to anymore. And now he's so, he's so full of the Holy Ghost. And he's so hungry. And he don't care what people think about it now. He's caught up in the current he's come on somebody hallelujah that's where God wants God wants you caught up in the current that's what happened in Acts they got caught up in the current of the river and they didn't worry about what the religious people were saying they didn't worry about the persecution they didn't worry about how people talked about them they went out and preached the gospel healed the sick raised the dead they didn't care if they got beat for the name of Jesus they didn't care if they got thrown in jail they were so caught up in the current of the river they couldn't help it hallelujah are you following what I'm saying this is not how I wanted this to go hallelujah hallelujah but see that's where God wants us God wants us where you can sit down clean God wants us where we're we're all in to where we lose control Whew, hallelujah 
our ideas go out the window. Our dreams go out the window. Our desires go out the window. Come on, hallelujah. And so, oh, thank you, Jesus. And so what was happening was this fast-flowing river was flowing, and people were getting swept up in it. Huh? Are you hearing me? That's what happened to some of y'all. That's why y'all came a few weeks ago, but you're back. Hallelujah. Huh? Because you got caught up in the river. You didn't mean to, but you walked in and it was like, whoop. <laughs> Next thing you know, you was like, whoa, wait a minute. Where am I? I'm filled with the Holy Ghost now. I'm, oh, that chain fell off and that chain fell off and that thing dropped and that thing dropped and now I ain't never felt like this before in my, and now you just, now you quit doing this and you're just like, you just, you just, now, you come on, you're just floating, hallelujah, you got, your, you got your feet kicked back, hallelujah, and you're just riding the current and you're grabbing whoever you can to get it. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. God is bringing a river through this house. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, so there's this. Okay, I got, I got a, a few minutes here. I can do this. There is this, what the Lord spoke to me about. He said, there, so Sean, he said, there's an all-in level of the river. Okay, let me do this real quick because I think this is, uh, God wants you to be all in. So what is the over the head level? What is that swimming level? Okay, here it is. Um, Acts chapter 20. Paul was in it. Acts chapter 20, verse 22. Uh, yeah, are y'all good? Hallelujah. Is this speaking to anybody? Y'all in the back, y'all okay? Hallelujah. We'll let y'all go in a minute, okay? Hallelujah. All right, good. You need, you, you need to, brother. Hallelujah. Now look. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Acts chapter 20, verse 22. Here's the all-in level. And now, behold, this, look at what Paul, this is Paul's talking here. He says, I go bound in the spirit. Look at that. Everybody say bound in the spirit. Okay. That's different than being bound by a spirit. <laughs> Come on. I'm going bound in the spirit. Hallelujah. In, unto Jerusalem. Watch this. Not knowing the things that shall befall me there. I don't know. I don't know exactly what's coming. He says the only thing I know is that... <clears throat> The Holy Ghost, verse 23, the Holy Ghost is witnessing in every city. So the Holy Ghost is causing people to prophesy to me in every city I go to saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. Look at this. In other words, the only thing I know that awaits me when I go to Jerusalem is persecution. But I can't not go because I'm going bound. Are you hearing me? This is the all in level. This is the over the head level. In other words, <clears throat> Paul is completely under the influence and the control of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The all in level, the level that God wants you to get to in this river is the level where you are completely overwhelmed under the control by the Holy Spirit where he is dictating everything about your life oh hallelujah are you hearing me if I'm bound if somebody binds me that means I'm completely under their control I'm obligated to do whatever they want five times in the epistles five times Paul called himself the prisoner of Christ Five times in his epistles when he was writing, he says, Paul, the, the prisoner of Christ. He called himself, he titled himself the prisoner of Christ. Paul knew what a prisoner, what it meant to be a prisoner because he spent most of his ministry in prison. Yes. Yes. 
He knew in prison, I'm not, I don't belong to me. I don't get to choose when I wake up. I don't get to choose when I go to bed. I don't get to choose. I don't get to choose. I don't get to choose when I'm in prison. I'm told what to do. I'm told where to go. I'm somebody's, I'm some, I'm a number. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm somebody's property, right? In prison. Paul knew what it meant to be a prisoner. And he says, I am a prisoner of Christ. I'm not my own. I'm caught up in the current of this river and I'm not deciding my direction. The rivers decide. Come on. Are you hearing me? The river is deciding my direction. Come on. Anybody want to be all in? But look at this. Look at this. Verse 24. I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. But none of these things move me. Look at that. Somebody shout, none of these things move me. What's Paul saying? He's saying in, in the all-in level, in the over-your-head level where you're caught up in the current of the river, he says, none of the persecution moves me. When I'm all in, when I'm caught up in the current of the river, and I'm just, and, and it's, and it's, and it's, and, and that is what's directing me, and that's what's moving me. He says, none of the persecution that awaits me is moving me out of the will of God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm all in. Somebody shout, I'm all in. That's what he's saying. I'm caught up in the current of the Holy Ghost and there's nothing that they can do to me that's going to stop me from floating. The <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So look, if I was caught up in the current of a raging river and you were on the banks shouting at me, come on, hallelujah, what could I do? Come on. If you were on the banks offering me something, hey, Sean, come here. I got some money for you. I got $50,000 for you. I say, I can't. I'm caught up in the current. <laughs> come on, somebody. I'm trying to make a point. You could tempt me with something, but there's nothing I can do about it because I'm caught up in the current. Paul says, none of these things move me. You can shout at me. You can talk about me. You can hit me. You can leave me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You can tempt me with sin, but I'm so caught up in the current. <laughs> See, some of y'all's deliverance will come when you go deeper into the Holy Spirit. <sighs> Are you hearing me? Some of y'all's deliverance will come when you get out of the ankle deep water. The reason why you go, I feel the Holy Ghost now. The reason why you can't get delivered is because at any time you can, you got enough control. Because you ain't deep enough. You got enough control to get out of the river and walk over and dabble in whatever's going on on the banks. But when you get all in, John, you can't come out. You can't just come. Come on, hallelujah. I said, somebody said, I just can't come out. I'm all in, hallelujah. I'm caught up in the Holy Ghost. Right. <laughs> Woo. God Almighty. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody shout, I'm all in, I'm all in. Whew. So what does that mean? That means I'm just going to float on by that bondage. <laughs> Ain't nothing I can do about it. I'm going to float on by that destruction. I'm going to float right on by that bad relationship. Oh, God, hallelujah. I'm going to float right on by that temptation. I'm going to float right on by that sin. Why? Because I'm so all in. I'm so caught up in the Holy Ghost. I couldn't get to it if I wanted to. Somebody shout amen. When you get caught up in the Holy Ghost, it'll change what you watch on TV. When you get caught up in the Holy Ghost, it'll change what you play on your phone. When you get caught up in the Holy Ghost, it'll change who you talk to and who you text with. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Somebody let the devil know I can't come out. I can't come out. I'm, I'm caught up in the current. I'm caught up in the current. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When y'all get saved in the back, y'all can praise God too. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Had the fires up front. Hallelujah. I, I'm just kidding. I know y'all are good. Hallelujah. I'm just kidding. Y'all setting on me, though. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But in the all-in level, oh, it's 830. I got, I got five minutes. I always give myself five extra minutes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But, but Paul says, none of these things move me. I got to say this. I got to say this. 
I think I got to say this. Maybe I don't need to say this. I don't know. Hallelujah. I'm caught up in a river right now. <laughs> oh, I'm caught up in the river. I'm caught up in the river. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch this. Neither. Ne he, look what he says. He says, none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I've received the gospel of the Lord Jesus testify the gospel of grace. Okay, look. In the all-in level, when you're over your head, that's where Paul was at, right? We've already established that. He says, I don't count my life dear to myself. The word dear there, when you study that out, it, it, means, it, it means costly, honorable, esteemed, precious, valuable. Look at this. I know this goes against every modern teaching going on in the church today, but I'm going to kick down their religious sacred cow tonight, all right? Hallelujah, before I leave out of here. Okay? In the all-in level, okay, watch this. I have to put a correct value on myself. Let me leave you with this. I, th I, I want to leave you with this. In the all-in level, I have to put a correct value on myself. In other words, I got to be like Paul who said, watch this. I don't count my life dear unto myself. But what's he saying? I'm not costly. Huh? Okay, stay with me. I'm not honorable. I'm not esteemed. I don't count myself esteemed. Come on. I don't even count myself precious or valuable. I know that goes against everything that the modern church is teaching you about this self-love today. Huh? That you're supposed to take care of yourself and how can you love anybody if you don't love yourself and you got to think about self and there's Christians posting stuff that, you know, like if, 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 if you can't pour back into my life, you know, I'm not, I'm not pouring back in anybody else's life. To, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, whew, hallelujah, to give without expecting anything in return. My brother was talking about it earlier. Y'all heard the gospel the earlier today. The Bible says love your enemies. The Bible says do good to them that never do good to you. Bless them that curse you. Come on. Pray for them that use you. Don't listen to that modern day psycho babble that has no scriptural basis just because some Christian said it or some famous TV prophet said it. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Woo. God Almighty. Paul says, Paul who's in the all-in level says, I don't count myself to be of any value. Watch this. Watch this. Because I said in order to be in the all-in level, you got to put a correct value on yourself. Watch this. <clears throat> this is the value I have to put on me. Why, Pastor? Because if the Holy Spirit leads me into something that might get me rejected, if I don't value myself the way Paul, if I don't see myself the way Paul sees himself, then I'm going to resist the Holy Ghost. <sighs> Hear me? That's ankle deep. That's knee deep. Be why? Because I'll say, I'll say, no, I'm not going to do that Holy Spirit because I'm too valuable to get rejected. Huh? Come on now. Uh, no, Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that because I might get rejected and I don't want to get rejected. That's because you think you're too valuable. But when you're caught up in the, that, see, that's, that's knee deep. You can resist the Holy Ghost because you value yourself too high. I'll fix this here in a minute. I'll fix it here in a minute because I don't want you going out of here depressed, ready to kill yourself. That's not what this is about. I'm, I'll fix it before I leave. But you got to get out of that place where you're too valuable to be punched or you're too valuable to be hit by the enemy or you're too valuable to be talked about. You're too valuable to be put down. No, you better get caught up in this current. Hallelujah. And forget about how valuable you are. Quit counting your life dear unto yourself. Why? So that you can do the things that God called you to do. I'm not too valuable. Oh, come on. Hallelujah to be rejected by people doing God's, well, yeah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Is this making sense to anybody? 
But watch this. But I can't give me. I'm almost. But I can't put a correct value on myself until until I put a correct value on Jesus. Let me say that again. I can't put a correct value on myself until I put a correct value on Jesus. Whew, watch this. Watch what happens to Paul. Watch what Paul. Watch what happens when I value Jesus correctly. When I say Jesus is the most valuable thing in my. Am I boring y'all? I'm almost done. I promise. Uh, if, if I say Jesus is the most valuable thing in my life. Watch what happens. Watch what Paul says. Philippians 3, because Paul was all in. Philippians 3, 7, and 8. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Watch this. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and the things that I've lost, I count them, I value them as nothing but dung, waste, garbage, trash, useless, that I may win Christ. Watch this. If I value Jesus correctly, then everything compared to him should be valued as much as dung. If I value Jesus correctly, if I've got the correct value on Jesus, then everything compared to Jesus should be valued as garbage, useless, waste. Watch this. So then... When the Holy Spirit leads me to do something that's going to glorify Jesus, but maybe it might disgrace me. It might get my name talked about. It might get me rejected. It might get me pushed out of certain circles. It might get me talked about. It doesn't move me. Why? Because I understand my value and I understand his value. And I understand the one being glorified is more valuable than the one being talked about. So let his name be lifted up and my name be torn down. Because if he gets lifted up, Oh, man. Come on, somebody. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Woo. Yeah. Are you seeing this? If Sean Campbell gets put down, it doesn't matter. Oh, hallelujah. But if Jesus gets lifted up, somebody's going to get delivered. Come on, hallelujah. And, whoo, and so if I understand how valuable he is, that no man can come to the Father except by Jesus, hallelujah, and that it's gonna take the blood, then when I compare myself to him, I say, wait a minute, Jesus, you are a lot more important than me, so go ahead and let him talk about me. I'm gonna lift up your name and give you glory, cause you are the one. Woo. Oh, did I make myself clear? <laughs> but here's the wonderful thing about it is I don't have to worry about valuing myself. I can focus on his value. Why? Because I know he values me. <laughs> So I don't count myself valuable. Why? Because I don't have to worry about it. Why? Because he's been valuing me long before I ever knew who he was. And so I'm going to spend my time valuing him. And I'm going to let the world do whatever they want to do. But I do know this, that if he values me, he's not going to let the world walk all over me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That he'll meet my needs. That he'll pour into me. Hallelujah. Come on. The, here's the thing. you got to quit doing it to yourself and let him do it. Hallelujah. Let him value you. You value him. <laughs> and it's freeing Lisa that means I can get caught up in this current and I don't have to worry about am I going to get what I need 
I ain't worried about me. I'm worried about him. And then I'm going to let him worry about me. I'm all in now. Come on, somebody. I'm not on the bank anymore trying to pamper myself and pour into myself and rest myself. I'm in the river floating, getting caught up in the current, going where God wants me to go, and I'm letting God strengthen me. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their, sh they shall mount up with wings. I, come on, they shall run and not be weary, walk and not, come on, cause I value him, he'll value me. I ain't worried about me, hallelujah. God will take care of me. I got to make sure he's honored. Oh, my God. Woo. Have you received? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. I, I get all these conferences where they have for women where they call you a princess and they put a crown on you. But why do I want you to put a crown on me when I do get my crown? I'm going to throw it at his feet. <laughs> Because I knew I couldn't have done it anything that got me that crown if it wasn't for him. So he deserves all the glory. I don't care what you call me. Call me a prince. Call me a prince of thieves. Call me whatever you want. Hallelujah. Call me ugly. Call me fat. Call me. Call me mean. Call me whatever you want to call me. Hallelujah. But long as somebody is calling on the name of Jesus, that's all that matters. Come on. Somebody give him a praise in this place. Oh, get on your feet. I got a hush. Hallelujah.